Good morning, Singapore. And hello to you guys. Welcome back to a brand new video where today I'm exploring Singapore. I don't even think I've showed you our incredibly messy hotel room. Very simple. We've got two beds. We've got a view. In here, we've got the bathroom. It's beautiful. Yep. Yeah. It's a hotel room. It is a beautiful room that will do us nicely for a couple of days because tomorrow I'm heading back to England and it feels like I've been away from England forever. But before we do that, like I said, we've got to explore Singapore and see what's what. So it's very expensive here, so we can't do too much because we spent a lot of our money like predominantly over in Vietnam. Uh, if you've not seen those videos, go watch them. But for now, it's time to head down the corridor, hit the elevator and explore the sea. So going down, please. You know, I'm not really entirely sure how to feel about my outfit. I've got new jean shorts on, but the shoes, not it. But they've been incredibly practical for Vietnam. They've been through torrential rain, on motorbikes, the whole lot. So I die by these shoes. First things first, we need a coffee. And now that we have that, we are in a taxi and we are on the road to Marina Bay because we are heading to that massive hotel over there. <laughs> that is the weirdest water feature I've ever seen in my life. But wow, this thing is huge. Like seriously, this building is pissing massive. That an infinity pool up there. Holy moly. Man, I should have brought my swimming shorts to this one. All right, we're going to Tower 3 because I need to be embraced by the aircon. Oh, it is lovely in here. Just like, look at the actual scale of this place. It's bloody crazy. Going up 55 flights in, I don't know, 30 seconds at most. Not even that really, it's like 10 seconds. You can feel the lift kind of sway a little bit. My ears have popped as well. Oh. Well, we've made it to the roof and oh my days. It is a very, very high... Oh, that's bloody hot that is, don't touch that. <laughs> Holy moly. What a view from up here you get. Just look at all of those ships just in the distance, man. What the hell? So that there is a massive tree forest. That there is like the Eden Project, kind of like a indoor gardens thing where they have plants from basically all over the world. But on the other side where you can see the city, this is where we're gonna be having a drink today. I tell you, in a weird way, I feel like I'm on a boat. I don't know what it is. It just feels like I'm swaying slightly. I don't know if that's because I can see down. It just feels a bit weird. One thing I am learning is not to touch this because it's very hot, but yeah. Look at the size of this city, man. I wonder what this looked like, I don't know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I bet it was a lot lower down. What is that? Looks like a big, like, glove. I wonder if we could spot the hotel where we're staying. It's somewhere over there. <laughs> but if you are a hotel guest, this is the infinity pool that you can chill in all day and enjoy the view. Wow. The downside of this bar is that every single table in here is reserved and there's copyright music everywhere, so I can't film much. But for about 17 quid, you can have a pint well, that's not even a pint, really. <laughs> you can have a glass of beer, enjoy this view, and sit up here for as long as you like. Now, don't get me wrong, you are paying for a great view, but you're pretty restricted to this bar. You can't go anywhere else. So the one thing I don't like about this place, and I'll sit down for this, but I'm not like, I don't really enjoy cities, to be honest. Ho Chi Minh was like the first time I went to a city. I like, everyone's so nice. You don't get lost in a crowd. People make time for you and stuff like that. But in Singapore, money talks here. And it's, it's very clear that that's, that's the culture, that's the way it is. I don't mean to say that Singaporean people or the people here are just, you know, they're not nice people, but it's a different experience. Like I fell in love with, with, with Vietnam because all the people are so hospitable and like so nice to you and they don't expect anything. So, you know, if, if, a, if a beer over there costs 50p, you could pay 50p and that'd be it. Like you could get a taxi, so if you've not got any money, they'd be like, oh, that's fine, no problem. Like they, we didn't get treated nicely because we tipped everyone or anything like that. Like we were treated nicely because that's just how the people are here. That's, that's how the culture is. Whereas here, you kind of get looked down a lot of the time. My experience of this city so far, and I've only been here for two days, I've not met one nice person really. Everyone's been quite pretentious. Uh, and you know, like I said, money talks here. Like if you've got money, you probably, this, the city is a different experience, I'd imagine. But yeah, not not really my vibe. I, I don't want to talk too negatively on it because it's a beautiful city, and I've, the, the stuff I've experienced whilst I've been here has been lovely. Don't get me wrong, we're at, we're on the way home, so it's it's almost like we're on the come down of our holiday. But would I come here again? Probably not. Like, don't get me wrong, if I won the lottery, then yeah, I'd come here because there's so many things to experience here. There's like so much stuff to do. Uh, but it. it, it 
if I could pick between Vietnam and Singapore, I go to Vietnam every single day of the week without like without a doubt in my mind. It's a beautiful city, but yeah, just not my kind of vibe. However, if you want to come to this place, experience with you, and have a drink, then like I said, 17 quid, so you can have a beer up here and enjoy it. If you stay in the hotel, you can actually use the pool over there. And I imagine that would actually be really, really, really good to sit in a pool, like an infinity pool on the roof here in the sun. It's gorgeous. The weather is lovely today. That would be an experience in itself, but you'd have to pay for the hotel. You can't get to the pool unless you like have a hotel reservation. So yeah, it's one of those. Something to experience. All right, back in the taxi because we're going to another hotel. And this one is known as Raffles Hotel. Which is a world famous hotel. But I mean, the Queen has stayed here. Michael Jackson stayed here. I mean, it's one of the few standing hotels from the 19th century. This place is stunning. Oh my days. I don't think I've ever seen something so clean in my life. This place is beautiful. Holy moly. I can see why, uh, you can see why the Queen has stayed here. <laughs> Holy crap. This place is, it's a bit much for me, I think. I, I definitely don't belong here. Wow. It's just amongst like all of the skyscrapers. This absolutely stunning hotel. There's, there's like huge buildings just surrounding this place. At the wow. other end, they've got shops here. Patek Philippe, Genie. Look at the watch there. That is a nice watch. Holy moly, look at that. I wonder how much that costs. A lot of money here. But it's an absolutely gorgeous watch here. Wow. Let's have a look in Rolex. I would love to know how much these things cost. Holy moly. Oh my days. Look at that. Oh, I, I, I genuinely, if you know how much that's worth, let me know. Not cheap, I'm betting. But wow, yeah. What a stunning place that was to go visit. Oh my days. Get me to America and I am dripping with sweat. I think we'll stay in here for a little bit. Oh yes, McDonald's. That's a bit more like it. I actually just asked for a straw, but here they're actually sippy cups. You don't use straws here. And when I asked for a large, I wasn't expecting this thing. It's massive but right even though it is basically the last day in Singapore kind of winding down we're a bit exhausted from our travels so we're gonna take the McDonald's go back to the hotel and chill by the pool I think but like I said without spending a lot of money here and going up to places like that where I was earlier it's a little hard to do anything like to see any sizes and stuff like that so there's always next time if I do come back but ironically I'm actually stood right next to the F1 track so if you look down there that is where part of the F1 track is and I just about recognize it because I used to work at Codemasters who made F1 games and I used to work on that track quite a bit but right where's our taxi and one short trip later I have made it back to the hotel where I intend on chilling for the next couple of hours I have a feeling that this pool is quite cold oh damn this pool is actually fucking freezing holy shit well that was a nice I don't know, like two and a half hours spent in the pool. But as you can see through there, the sun is starting to set in the distance, which, oh my days, would you look at that for a view? Oh my God, I wish I'd caught the sun between those two bars there. Damn. But right, I think I'm gonna head back to the room now uh, and probably start packing my bags up, ready for leaving tomorrow, because I'm headed home tomorrow, and then go out for a meal. Because you can't see it from here, but just down there, there's a nice steak like steak place i'm gonna have a wagyu steak for the first time so i'll skip all the boring stuff and i'll see you guys there i say that but i've just been sat here and i took this picture here if you don't do so already i very rarely actually shout this out but go and follow me on instagram i post most of the vlogging stuff that i do i post quite regularly on my instagram obviously if i'm not doing anything in the week i don't post anything but when i am about i, I try to take as many pictures as i can I, I always forget to take photos because i'm always vlogging stuff but i couldn't resist but take a photo at this amazing sunset oh my days did some really funky thing where i spilt some water all over this surface here and got a reflection of it looked pretty dope but man it's been a brilliant holiday I miss Vietnam already, I can't lie to you. We're coming back next year. But before we do, we're going for a Wagyu steak at this beautiful restaurant, which is called the Bar Roque Bar, which is a lovely little spot right next to the hotel. And we've got ourselves a beer. And I believe we're having the house dry aged beef and having some tender Wagyu, which is a first for me. But to start out, Dad's ordered some grilled octopus, which I've never had before. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But in the essence of the holiday of trying things new. Quite chewy. <laughs> They're quite nice. Well, that was lovely. I don't get me wrong, I'm not a huge fan of fish. The octopus was nice, but it has like this like smell, the smell of fish. And that ruins the taste for me, but 
Hoping to try and things. Well, the main course has arrived and this is the, the famous Wagyu steak I've heard so much about. I'm intrigued to see how this tastes. All right, so you say it's meant to be tender? Yeah. All right. Melt in your mouth. Melt in my mouth. Oh, really good. That is amazing. I need to try some of the sauce now though. So a bit of black pepper sauce as well. Mm. Even nicer. Wow, that's really good. Well, dinner at the Barrow Grill last night was absolutely lovely. But as you can clearly tell, it is now the next day. And today is the day that we travel back to England on what is like a 20 hour trip. So it's time to head back up to our room at the Carlton City Hotel and pack our bags. We're gonna come down to the hotel lobby and there is a robot cleaning the floor. Look at this guy. I've never seen a, 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 like one of these things in person. It says I'm here. Oh, well, it goes around me. For a machine, he looks oddly cute. I don't, I don't know what it is. <laughs> this is a little a smiley face. Well, that is cool, but it has to be said, man. There is, there is something about this country. I don't know what it is. I, maybe I'm just really unfortunate with my visit, but everyone's fucking miserable, man. It's like, you ask him, it's like, oh, for fuck's sake, do I have to make that? Is it? Yes. <laughs> God. I'm looking forward to going home. Don't get me wrong, this trip has been nothing short but amazing. But it has been, I feel like I've been gone for a lifetime. 14 days, a long holiday. But I've got everything crammed in my suitcase. I need to get my bag packed down there. And then we're basically ready to go. We have left our suitcases at the hotel. Just me and my backpack now, because I'm not leaving that anywhere. It's got my laptop in it and all sorts of stuff. But we don't actually fly out until 9.45 PM. So we've actually got another like nine hours. So whilst the weather is actually nice, I think we're just gonna chill out for the day, relax, mosey around, and essentially just kill time. But we have come to say goodbye to Dad's friend before we leave, and this is like a residential area. Like, look at this place, man. We've got like pools here. So, it's like a holiday destination. But what's been a millisecond for you has been about two, three hours for me. So we are leaving now. Uh, I don't know what we're doing. We might be going to the airport a little bit early because they have a shopping center there. But either way, I have ordered the taxi and he shall be here at any moment. And so from the taxi to the airport, our journey home begins now. Welcome to the, Sh I want to say it's Changi Airport in Singapore. Very, very swanky. Time to see if we pass the bag weight check. Well, I've never done this before, but we just used a quick check-in thing to print our own bag things. And with that peeled off and that stuck on, jobs are good in. Now we just have to play the waiting game because the actual goal was to come a little bit early, see if we can check our bags in. Once the bags are checked in, we can go wander around and go check out the mall because apparently it's a really famous mall or something like that. So unfortunately, it doesn't actually open until like half five, six o'clock. So we've got to wait around a little bit. So I think we'll probably go find somewhere to sit. And at the front of the queue on the floor is exactly where I plan to sit. Self bag checkout. What are we saying? 30, 30 kg your bag? 29.3, which is just underweight. But this technology, man, it's fancy as it is. It takes, it takes ages. Well, that wasn't the smoothest process in the world, but I, my bag weighed 27 kg and my dad's weighed 29. So we're under the 30 kg limit. Time to check out what the dual shopping mall is like. I've heard so much about this place, but I'm interested to see what's actually inside it. I assume it's just gonna be a shopping mall. But man, I've been inside that long. I forgot how hot it is outside. Wow. Oh, there's a massive apple store here as well. And a waterfall. What on earth? Look at that. It's a massive waterfall over there. This place is great. Look how sick that is. Holy crap. That is awesome. What a cool idea. The even of the airport transport going straight through the middle of it. How sick is that? Wow, this place really is quite futuristic. And if you're a little bit squeamish, you don't really like meat and cook meat and stuff like that, I'd look away now. Oh my, that does, that does not look appetizing to me. Holy moly. My Lord, this place, it goes all the way. There's people on the roof up there and it goes all the way down there. This place is massive. Oh, look at that for a kid's play area, just on the roof. What the fuck? Well, we've just sat down to have some mac and -E's, and look at that. The war feature goes, oh, we're fucking hardly tripped <laughs> down there. That is bizarre. Well, food was lovely. But time to go to Terminal 1. Where I can confidently say I'm probably not going to vlog much more now until I'm back at England because don't have to be perfectly honest, I don't find a flight all that enjoyable. So yeah, maybe I'll see you guys there. I've got to go through security, but I am absolutely exhausted. And I somehow need to stay awake 
for like the next, I don't know, like 12 hours, I think, something like that. And hopefully reset my sleeping pattern. Bloody hell, this airport is very, very, very fancy. Everything about it is like clean. And expensive. <laughs> And what was probably 18 hours later, I'm back in London. And I'll be honest with you, I have actually got no idea where my dad is. I went to the toilet and he disappeared. But hopefully my luggage got here. I do believe Jess and Benjamin are waiting for me here, so I'm excited to see them. But oh, man, what a trip it's been. I honestly have no idea how the vlog has been these last couple of days, because I've just been genuinely, I've just been so tired. But hopefully it came together all right. But anyways. Let's go get our stuff. Which amazingly has made it all this way completely unscathed. I guess now we just need to go find Jess and Benjamin. Oh look, they've made a sign. Look at that. <laughs> Hi mate. Thank you, thank you. you made a big you sign. So yeah. You missed Daddy. <laughs> And just like that, we are back in very sunny England. I don't know how, but by some miracle, it is like 20 degrees today. And whilst it might not have been my smartest idea coming out to record an outro in the wind, it's nice to be outside and start to feel a little bit better. I have no longer got COVID. I had it for about, I don't know, a week and a half, but we can kick it. Oh shit, bloody hell. <laughs> Let me do that. We can kick it to the side and return to a little bit of normality and some family adventures in the tent box because I've not had a chance to actually go out on it just yet. But as I take a seat down here, I thought I'd come out here, enjoy the sun and tell you of a little bit of the probably the biggest mistake I've actually ever made. And that was taking someone else's suitcase home from the airport. Not, not my proudest moment. And as I tried to get this barn it to stay in some, some place, I don't even know. Yeah, I, uh, I got back home after like, I don't know, about an hour and 45 minute drive back home. Obviously I was exhausted. It was lovely to see Jess and Benjamin. I can't believe they made a sign for me. It was so nice. I got back home, I showered, I chilled out for a bit. I was like, oh, I'll get all the presents out of the suitcase. Can't wait to do that. And it probably comes as no surprise. I couldn't get in the suitcase. So I had to pack things all back in the car, drive back another hour and 45 minutes to Stansted Airport, to go through the back door of security, to hand the bag back, to get my bag and then come back home. So <laughs> silver linings is that by the time I'd done all this, like half, the whole day had gone and I had to stay awake for it. So it kind of fixed my sleeping pan a little bit. My, mate, what is going on with this hair? I need a haircut. <laughs> but either way, it is solved and sorted now. We are back home. And it's actually, mate, the weather is gorgeous and it is very tempted to go camping this weekend. Obviously, as I film this, I am way, way the future. Uh, I'm only actually like a week out or something like that. So the vlogs will catch up to like now, like present time. Obviously, with the 10 vlogs or how many vlogs it was of me being in Vietnam and Singapore, um it's been been a bit of a time skip but i haven't actually filmed much since i've been back because i've been spending time with jess and benjamin and just relaxing a little bit catching things up with work and, and all that jazz so there are family vlogs coming back um it's going to take me a little bit of time to get used to filming vlogs like that again because obviously when i went abroad i filmed every single day and some of the vlogs kind of fell apart some of them didn't because i had no idea when i woke up that day how things were gonna turn out. We literally made up the holiday as we went along. One thing for sure though, I got blessed by the sun and I very rarely saw any rain. I'm glad I got to experience it, but honestly, <laughs> mate, I, can't, I can't, can't forget that tan line out of my arm when I got over to, uh, to Cat Bar, but damn, what a trip. I can't say it enough. It was honestly the trip of a lifetime. It was so amazing. I'm so thankful to Jess that she was happy enough for me to go away for two weeks stay at home and look after Benjamin and stuff like that. I'm so lucky in that regard. So a massive thank you to Jess. She already knows this, but we're back, back to normality. Benjamin started school. It's autumn, even though it, it feels like summer. And if you guys are looking forward to some good old fashioned vlogs, then please make sure you leave the video a thumbs up rain. I'd appreciate that. If you are new around here, hit subscribe. We are growing the channel. I can't believe that the channel is still growing. I expected the views to drop off a little bit from the adventure because they're not up to date with what's going on. And I've got back and I'm thinking, maybe we should just do some standard vlogs. It's like what I get up to on a day-to-day -day basis because people seem to really enjoy those vlogs, even though I don't really think they're much content. 
Like, oh my God, you should see the state of my house. I need to, we should do another cleaning vlog. But alas, we must say goodbye. And I shall see you guys on Wednesday for the next vlog at 6 p.m. where we're going on a little adventure in the tent box. So thank you very much for watching guys. I appreciate you as always, and I'll catch you guys there. Bye-bye.